Hey guys, I'm gonna try to <laughs> again. Hey, watch this replay. I got 20 minutes now. Facebook just kicked it all. I don't know what's going on. We're gonna try it again. Hopefully it'll work this time. If it doesn't, I'll get on later or tomorrow and try to finish it so you guys can be blessed by the word. Hey, I'm Pastor D. I'm a senior pastor at Unity Worship Center. I just lost everybody on the past one, uh, but jump back on. I hope it can be a blessing to somebody. I'll share it quickly because I got to move um, on today. Um, Facebook, thank God. Social media, guys, it's, it's, it is what it is. Um, it does it. So let's go. Let's go get started again. I was in Luke 23, verse 32 through, uh, 32 through 43. I was in Luke 23. I want y'all to hear this. And thank y'all for sharing because y'all know it's about to get good and it stopped. Uh, but I wanted to say this again. So number one, we talk about two penitent thieves on the cross of Calvary with, with Jesus. They are on the cross of Calvary. And one of the word of God, it tells you now there was one thief that says something to Jesus, kind of mocking and he was saying, hey, you know, if you be the Christ, save yourself and us. But one of the things that now that you need to understand about the word of God is very simple and is very easy is that, ladies and gentlemen, when you get this in your spirit, you would understand that now, watch this, ladies and gentlemen, that this man, hey, 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 how you doing, my friend? went with the opinion of the crowd this man is a sinner he is a is a person that was locked up in jail um in maximum security and one of the things you don't get now there is no way that he would know anything about jesus or witness any miracles that jesus has done because he was in jail right so the only thing that he could do is go by the opinion of the crowd and now he tells jesus to save yourself and us let me can I say it this way to some of you y'all need to get this in your spirit i mean it's crazy that now people will see you down and then they will now stomp on you while you are down it don't work that way ladies and gentlemen you got the nerve and unmitigated god to talk about me didn't ask me to bless you no that's not how i roll I, I just want to say that let me go and chase that rabbit some people come under you under these mantras like they want something and they need something from you but ladies and gentlemen they put their mouth on you then turn around and ask you to bless them See, people will go with the opinion of the crowd and they will literally, ladies and gentlemen, go with based on what they've seen or what they've heard. The crazy thing about life, some people don't like you. They never will like you because what they do, they go and they make and form an opinion based on what somebody else has said. So you'll walk into a room. Let me say it again. They don't know you. Never had lunch with them. You never had dinner with them. You don't know them. You don't owe them money. You don't know they man. You don't you're not even in their circle. And they'll literally hate you based on a rumor or based on what the crowd said about you or based on what someone else or someone else said or whispered about you. So you'll walk into these rooms and these people will suck their teeth, stick their nose up at you. They will have conversations about you. They'll have innuendos about you and they'll literally say stuff about you and you have no clue why they don't like you. But one of the things that I keep telling you is that the enemy is very spiritual and in his spiritual the enemy never sees your present potential he always looks at your future promise one of the things i just told you is that some of you need to understand that what you've done in your life sometimes you'll get to this place where you'll allow your reasons to outthink your faith thank y'all for sharing everybody share it hit that button don't look don't wait for me to actually share it out watch this some of you you'll let your reasons outthink your faith the crazy thing about people is this. Some people have more than you and they do less. All right. You have less and you do more because you have never placed yourself in a box where you allow your reasons to outthink your faith. Some men, some women on here right now, they got a man. They're not happy. You don't have a man. You sleep with a teddy bear, but you are happier because your faith steps out and takes precedent over your reason. Some people don't like the fact that you ride in the car that barely makes it. You're standing in an apartment. They stand in a gated community. They're working a job making 100000 a year. You're barely making 30000 but you're happier because down on the inside, God has placed something in you innately ladies and gentlemen that now you would never listen you keep looking at faith and you believe any day now that god's going to do something and bust you at the scene check this out so they go with the opinion of the crowd secondly is this ladies and gentlemen he said something to jesus he said save yourself and us right thank y'all for sharing save yourself and us here it is now so he comes to jesus under this mantra under this false pretense where he said save yourself 
and us, okay? The crazy thing about it, ladies and gentlemen, he was just not trying to come at God, ladies and gentlemen, to be saved and coming under the right pretense. He was trying to come unto God so now he can get the activity of God, but he did not really want to acknowledge who God was. Can I say this to y'all? There are some people who literally would come to you under the pretense because they want activity, but they never will acknowledge who you really are. Oh, come on, Facebook. See, y'all should have shared it out. Y'all been stingy. Let me say it again. They'll come to you under the pretense of the activity, but they will never acknowledge who your gifting or what your gifting is. You'll help people. They will always want the activity that you can bring them, but they don't want to acknowledge really who you are. Why? Because some of you grew up with them. Some of them are your family. Some of them you never thought you would make it this far. Some of them never thought you would supersede them and go past them. Some of them you are in ministry with. Some of them you work with. Some of them you graduated with. Some of them are people that are in close proximity to you, but they really don't have a relationship with you. Ladies and gentlemen, people will come under the mantra of activity, but they will never acknowledge who you really are. Can I say this to you relationally? Some of you need to understand the reason some people are around you is based on the activity they know you can bring them you can decipher that any kind of way you want to can i put it in a relationship ladies sometimes men stay around you based on the activity that you bring them hmm. but they won't acknowledge who you really are in public Wow, okay. Uh, they really and see in public he he really won't say this man is the Christ. He just said, "Oh, well, if you are who you are, save yourself and us." You need to catch what I just said, ladies and gentlemen on here today. See, they are now based the relationship on activity, but when you stop activity, these certain men, these certain women, these certain ministry people will get gone. They'll start to leave you. See what happens is this. Sometimes you'll base it on activity and you'll mistake activity for love. And that's what this man does in this text in Luke 23, 32 through 43, he tries to get the activity of God, all right? But he does not want to acknowledge that he is God. Wow. See, ladies, you can't be in a relationship with a man that only acknowledges the activity, but he doesn't acknowledge the relationship. Oh, somebody should have tweeted that. Yeah. He only acknowledges the fact that, hey, hey, the activity. See, when you stop the activity, you're going to find out the real thing about the relationship. That's good, Cassandra. Y'all share this to you all. Let me move on, ladies and gentlemen. So now he's interested in the activity of God. Now he comes under God to under a false pretense. Watch this shout under false pretense and this is what he does now so he's not interested ladies and gentlemen in acknowledging god he's interested in the activity of god listen to this and while he's interested in the activity of god he's not interested in being saved delivered healed set free he's interested in the source of god's strength all right and so some of you need to hear this in your spirit and catch this today there are people that come around you they're not interested in anything else but the source of your strength he understood that if god would open his mouth then he could save everybody he could have stopped the crucifixion everything would have come to a standstill and some of you need to get this in your spirit and you need to understand this on today that there are people that come under false pretenses they are not interested in anything else but the source of your strength that's why you got to watch how you retaliate. That's why you got to watch how you come back at people. That's why you got to watch who's in your search circle. That's why you got to check your socioeconomic status and people that you take gifts from and you take things from. You can't be doing favors in exchange for favors. That's why you got to be careful who you let around you. That's why you got to be very careful of who you let in your circle. That's why you got to be very careful who you let around your family, your wife, your children. There are people that are interested in a source of your strength. And if you post the wrong thing, if you retaliate the wrong thing, wrong, wrong way. See, sometimes people don't, uh, they know, they know that if they get up under your skin, that your name carries weight and relevance. Okay. So if they mention your name in a conversation, your name will keep somebody's ears perked up because your name is relevant. I don't know if this happened to anybody today. I hope it's happened to somebody. So he was interested in God opening his mouth. 
And when God, okay, Proverbs 18, 20, 21 tells you death and life is in the power of the tongue, ladies and gentlemen. He was not interested in anything else but God opening his mouth because he understood that if God, see, ladies and gentlemen, that's why you can't cuss them out and speak in tongues on Sunday and cuss them out on, on Monday. You got to learn how to open your mouth at the right junctures in time and only speak life in dead situations. That's why you can't go back at people and rehearse what they've done to you. You got to speak life. And he understood that if Jesus opened his mouth, stuff would have got popping. All right. Next point. Let's move on. All right. Thank you all for sharing to your wall if you shared it. Okay. Listen to this. And I'm out of here. And this is what I want to say. I got two points and I'm done. This is the problem. Hey, Kay. This is the problem. This is the problem which I don't get. This is going to bless five of y'all. Y'all can probably throw your wig out there and say this one. But just, just go put it back on. You pay too much money for it. Listen to this point. Watch this, ladies and gentlemen. So now, he is interested, watch this, in the source of God's strength. He is not interested in being saved. So let me do a, 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 something very simple. I hope you don't miss it. He is not interested in movement with God. He's interested in that moment with God. Lord, see, I, I, somebody should have took off running. I, I just blessed y'all better than y'all responded. If that didn't make you share the video, I guess you ain't getting it. All right, let me say it one more time. See, the problem with this text and people, ladies and gentlemen, he was not interested in salvation. He was interested in escaping that moment. Lord, help us God today. See, some people in your life, ladies and gentlemen, they're not interested in movement with you. They're just interested in stand in that moment in time. Lord, help us God today. Can I say this again? Can I say it again? Some of y'all need to get this. See, in relationships, some of you don't get that. They're not interested in this relationship moving. They're interested in the moment. Lord God, today, oh my, oh my Lord, did y'all get that? Please. This man is not interested in eternal life. He's interested in getting off the cross. Be very careful of people that are interested in only moments, but they're not interested in any movement. Oh, help us God today. See, that's what y'all don't get some time. You got around certain people and you thought, oh, yeah, this is going to be, oh, I got the white picket fence picked out. This is going to be my husband. This is going to be the man for me. These people going to finally love me. This is going to finally be the relationship. And they were not interested in anything moving any further. They were just interested in that moment. Lord Jesus, help us. Put it on the legerity. I'm telling you, that's how people will do you. They will literally walk into your life and they're not interested in anything but that moment. But see, ladies and gentlemen, if you are someone that's real and authentic with the person that you are with or with the people that you're around, you are not just interested in, ladies and gentlemen, okay, one moment, you are interested in a connection. See, he should have been interested in the connections because when you are interested in a connection with Jesus, you don't just want one one moment with Jesus, you want movements with Jesus. You want Jesus to keep doing this. You want Jesus to keep blessing me. See, if you're in a relationship with somebody, ladies and gentlemen, you don't want just one good moment and he shows up on Valentine's Day and blesses you with some chocolates and a little ugly teddy bear that you really don't like. You want movement in this relationship. So you want to date him this time and then you want to fall in love and then hopefully now he's going to pop the question and ask you to marry. You're interested in movement. You're not just interested in moment. See, be Beware of those that only want to capture moments, but they want no movement. Move on, Pastor D. They, ain't, they, ain't, they don't like you today. Next point, I got to go. I thought y'all liked this, but I guess y'all don't. And le next point, this is what he does. This is what I just posted. Thank y'all for sharing. I'm done. Because the practice is this, ladies and gentlemen. This is what I posted on today. So this man knows Jesus' source of his strength. The crazy thing about life, and I got to wrap a bow around this, is this. It's amazing that people will love your gift, but they hate you. Oh, my God. Facebook, I got to go. I thought y'all liked this. But I guess y'all missed what I just said. This man, Luke 23, 32 through 45. This man knows because he's heard about Jesus' gift. But he doesn't like Jesus. The devil does not see. Oh God! Some of you, you've been manipulated by too many people, because they only invite you for your gift. Mm. But they can't stand you. <laughs> My God, today, 
They only invite you because you will show up at the job and you get stuff done just by walking into the room. And they know you can come in there and you can make stuff move. You can make stuff happen. You can get it done. They know you can show up at a particular juncture in service and take the microphone and blow it up. Now, because you blow it up now, now you know, they can get a good offering because the anointing moves. They know you can show up and you can dance with Jerry. They like your gift, but they don't really like you. And see, this devil on this cross, he loved the gift that God had, but he did not love God. You need to beware of people that only love your gift, but they can't stand nothing about you. Ooh, see, when you get that in your spirit, you'll stop showing up at certain places because you know it's just bigger than your gift. Because a true, authentic, anointed person will tell you, I didn't even ask for this anyway. And some days I want to give it back to God because sometimes I don't even want it. Yeah, something. And Lord, why? God, I wasn't even thinking about that. God, why did I get this gift? God, why did you give it to me? See, that's what it is. Some of these gifts you don't even ask for. That's how God built you innately. And they want your gifting, but they don't want your turmoil. They don't want your trouble. They don't want, come on, ladies and gentlemen, they don't want your struggle. They don't want your pain. They want everything that you have, but they never want to endure what you've been through, which means you can't have what I have. Ladies and gentlemen, there are a lot of people that are surrounded around you. And the reason some of you stress yourself out and some of you are frustrated about life, you're frustrated about money, you're frustrated about bills, you're frustrated and nothing is not even wrong with your body. You stressing yourself out because you keep hanging around counterfeit fictitious fake people that only love your gift but they can't stand you mm. so you stressing yourself out because you just hoping god changes them you hoping god does something do different for them you hoping one day that your father your mother your family will will finally appreciate you you're hoping one day that your pastor is going to finally appreciate you you're hoping one day that they see everything that you do on the job is going to finally get their attention and the crazy thing about it is this they're just using you and manipulating you for your gifting ladies and gentlemen but they can't stand you, you want me to prove it to you i've been at a place well, people want me to come preach and they want me to come do this, prophesy and minister and do that. And the crazy thing about life is, ladies and gentlemen, people always want high dollar gifting and they want high dollar anointing, but they want to pay you from the dollar menu. Are y'all catching what I'm saying? See, the thing about the word of God is very free, but your time is not free. You can't give everything for free, ladies and gentlemen. Don't let people see. You can't take every engagement for free. You can't go drive everywhere for free. You can't. And see, when that word gets out there about you, people start using you because they know you are free okay i don't know if y'all like that point so the crazy thing about people is this people will be enamored with your gifting but then they'll hate the fact that they can't do it y'all ever been to a place in your life where people love the fact that you can do what you do okay you started your business and you making moves and you can do what you do and you're good at what you do and they're enamored by your gifting but they hate the fact that they can't do it ladies and gentlemen that's what people will do they will love the fact that you can do it but they hate the fact they can't do it so even after you do it and you do it unto the glory and the honor of god they'll talk about you after the fact i gotta go facebook I just want to bless somebody today. I don't know if anybody caught what I said today, but I want to say this today. So sometimes, ladies and gentlemen, you have to be aware. Be very cognizant. All right. And be very spiritual of those who love your gift, but they hate you. Some of you on here right now, they hate the fact, watch this, y'all, that you make struggle look good. You make struggle look anointed. You broke and still feel like a millionaire. They hate the fact because people hate the fact that they can't go through like you have went through. They can't go through and endure. See, when they go through, they leave church. They stop praying. They cuss everybody out. They stick up the middle finger. When you go through, you say, Lord, thank you, because I know at the end of this story, it's for your glory. When they go through, they want to go beat somebody in the parking lot. They want to go quit. They want to go postal. They want to go off. When you go through, you say, you know what, God, I know this is working out for my good. See, people don't like the fact that you can endure hell and you can look good doing it right is this blessing anybody on today and all i'm saying is ladies and gentlemen there are two thieves on the cross one comes and jesus this is going to bless five of you that's paying attention jesus listen to this doesn't respond to the doubter he only responds to the man that he's taking with him look luke, luke 23 yeah 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 you think i'm playing go look at it jesus said this day 
you will be with me in paradise right now. This day, ladies and gentlemen, which means Jesus didn't say you got to put no chair out. You ain't got to take them to the water. He said this day you will be with me in paradise. Check this out. Right. All right. Now, the flip side to that is this, ladies and gentlemen, you got to be very careful how you address Jesus and his deity. OK, because the crazy thing about this other man, he is in close proximity to God and he can see God. Now, one of the critical things that you can think about is this. It is very possible that you can look at God and you can be close to God and still go to hell. Ooh, y'all missed every bit of that. Wow. Better be very careful of how you talk about God. You better be very careful of how you treat God. You better be very, see, it's possible that you can be close to Jesus and you can look up on him and still go to your demise. Ladies and gents, I got to go. I just wanted to say that. That ain't nothing to do uh, with the end. I just felt like that needs to be said because you don't get it sometimes. People got to be very careful of how they put their mouth on you. They got to be very careful of how they treat you. They got to be very careful of how they put your name on their lips. They got to be very careful because you are the anointed vessel of God. And when you pray prayers, you don't pray prayers for God to go back and get your enemies because Jesus said something to them. He said, Father, forgive them, plural forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. What he's saying in the word of God, he says, hold your wrath. Let them come. They don't have a clue who they messing with. Hold your wrath, God, because I know you want to come and rush to me. And I know you want to come and defend your child. There are certain prayers that you need to understand in the word of God. And one of the prayers is an imprecatory prayer. An imprecatory prayer is not telling God to go back and go get your enemies. Y'all stop saying that. Stop telling God to go back and beat your enemies up and God go kill my enemies. That's not how God works. What you say to God is this, God, I'm not telling you to go and kill my enemies or do anything or do any harm to my enemies. What I'm saying to you, God, in an impregnatory prayer, I'm saying, God, because they are messing with your child, they are messing with you. And because they are messing with me now, they are putting their mouth on you. When they talk about me, they talk about you. When they look up on me crazy, they look at you crazy. When they put your, my name on their lips, they doing it to you. When they text me out of character, they're doing it to you. So God in an impregnatory prayer, what I'm saying because they're not messing with me, they messing with you. You do what's in your best interest to defend me because I belong to you. Lord, help us God today. I gotta go. I'm just saying. And when you say that to God, you say, God, they're not messing with me. they touching the anointed, which means they touching you. God, I didn't say nothing. I said, and see, when you understand that, that's when the vengeance of God comes back in. When you get that, that's when God will come back in. That's when God will say, you know what? Now, they've been causing too much hell to my child on this job. I'm going to remove all of them out the way, and I'm going to put her in that place to be a boss, and they got more tenure. Ooh, wow. Did y'all hear me? Now, They've been giving my child hell. I got to remove them because they're not messing with them. They're messing with me. That's what you got to say, ladies and gentlemen. And when you see that in the spirit, it's kind of hard sometimes to keep your mouth closed. But when you close your mouth, that's when God can open his. Hmm. And so today, I want to tell you today, ladies and gentlemen, beware of those who love your gift, but they hate you. They love everything about you. Is when your gift is in motion. But when you're done with your gift, they can't stand you. Okay? You got to get to the place, ladies and gentlemen, where now, once again, you cannot allow the enemy to come at the source of your strength. The source of your strength. Luke 23, 32 to 43 is in your mouth. It's not in retaliation. Stop posting what people did to you, what they said about you. Post the goodness of God. That's yea and amen. That promise he'll never leave you like this. And when you understand what Jesus did at the last point in here, I'm done. Listen to this. Jesus said, hold your out. He said, because surely if they got to see me die, they got to see me rise again. The best thing you can ask God to do is keep your enemies alive long enough to see you rise again. Man, don't ask God to kill your enemies. Ask God to keep them alive. So they can see your success. Did y'all catch that? Please tell me y'all got that. Don't ask God to take your enemies out. Ask God to leave them around. So they can see you rise again. And when you finally get that in your spirit. You'll be like my head. 
like my Angelo, still I rise, my friend. Still I rise. And that's what you see when you are mature and you are anointed by God. And when you really get this in your spirit, you won't let people frustrate you again. You won't let people upset you again. All right. Listen, I hope it's been a blessing to somebody on today. I'm about to shoot out of town real fast. My sister just had a baby. She don't know how come. All right. The Jerry was send it off. <laughs> Anytime y'all want to so go to www.pastordlous.com. Pastor D. Lewis, and so it helps our ministry, so you can sow anytime, www.pastordlewis.com. Can y'all do me a favor, and I'm going to say it this way, if you love God and you're listening under the sound of my voice, not Pastor D., you love God, would you hit that share button and share it to your wall? Uh, we did a video the other day, in like one hour, it was like 6,000 people jumped on it, and I know it's in the middle of the day. But it, the more you share it, the more people can hear the word of the God, of the Lord. If you are not following me and this is your first time seeing me, go ahead and follow me. Turn on your notifications because I do a lot of encouragement. I do a lot of word. Uh, I'm that pastor that's real relevant and relatable. I promise you I'm that pastor. If you're ever around me, you can be glad to, to be around me. I'm just a simple, easygoing guy. I will be in New Orleans on next month with Bishop Blake's. And I want you guys to come if you are in that area in New Orleans on next month. I will be with Bishop Blakes. So come and see us. The flyers posted to my wall. Once again, make sure you share this out. Follow me right now. I love you guys. I hope it's been a blessing to each and every one of you on here today. If it has, shoot me a message. Tell me it has. Send me an inbox. Um, if you want prayer requests, go to unitywc.com. If you are in the Shreveport, Louisiana area, um, come by and visit us at 6.30 on Wednesday nights and 9 o'clock a.m. on Sundays, 8833 Kingston Road. You're going to be glad you did. Service is 90 minutes of power, impact, and I promise you, you're going to be glad you came. Y'all have a blessed day. Facebook Live. I'll talk to each and every one of you soon. God bless you.